Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast. We have a great show for you. We have frozen news from Walt Disney World and Hong Kong Disneyland. And over at Tokyo Disney Sea's 15th anniversary, we have some news from there. And this week's infotainment is, it's raining. Now what? And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. And it's funny because it just started raining outside my window. <laughs> yeah, it's been raining over here all evening, so. Yeah. Yeah, when it rains in Florida, it's serious, kids. Yeah, it is serious. All right, so, John, let me ask you, did you have a good weekend? I had a great weekend. Why did you have a great weekend? I had a great weekend because I was off uh, all day on Saturday, and then Sunday, I got to drive over to the Four Seasons Orlando Resort, and I got to take part in the beers and barbecue event with my good buddy, Tony Casanova from Disney Bite and Numbers. <laughs> and I had a good time because I was out with Park Hopper John. <laughs> Sweet. And Park Hopper Sid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we had yeah. a good time. Yeah, I think uh, for tw- that. All you can eat for twenty nine dollars at the Four Seasons was a steal, <laughs> right? Yes, with with a couple of catches. Okay, okay so go ahead. so the whole event was a Father's Day shindig. And they did a barbecue, and so what they did is they trans well they sort of transformed the Palm Ballroom and then the Lady Palm area outside of the Palm Ballroom, and they had um, a grill set up. They were cooking hot dogs and hamburgers. They had another area that was uh, outside, which was a Bloody Mary bar. And they had another area outside, which was for uh, Heineken beer. That was one of the, the corporate sponsors. And I'll get to that in just a second. And then further out, they had like giant Jenga blocks and they had, you know, a yard or you know, games like they didn't have lawn darts, but they had a, you know, cornhole and then they had some inflatables for baseball, basketball and football toss. And it was really kind of cool inside. They had this incredible layout of food. It was, it was, it was amazing with ribs and chicken and wings and, and sides and stuff. But the thing was, it was touted as a beers and barbecue and they wrote it very, uh, a particular way. And I didn't read it too carefully because I thought it was going to be, you know, all the beer that you could drink, you know, and then if you wanted a cocktail or something else that was extra, what it really said was all the beers that dads could drink and then everything else was extra. So I got my armband for free Heineken's and then I'm thinking that my wife's going to get one. She didn't get one. I was like, say what? And then we went and looked I it know. up. <laughs> I was like, oh, dadgummit. I still would have gone, but that was the one thing that it kind of put me off for the first, like, 15 minutes but the food was outstanding yeah uh, yeah I, I agree you know anytime these guys put on a food thing their food they take food to the next level i mean this was a buffet and the food was not you know sometimes on a buffet food could be kind of eh, you know mediocre right. you know it gets overcooked because right. it's been sitting out there or whatever but they really kept that nice and clean and crisp and and the food was really awesome so um and we have some things planned uh, coming up for the Four Seasons, uh, which we'll probably announce within the next week or two. Yeah. Um, but we're going to take some people there. We're going to have some fun, I think. Yeah. Augustine, Augustine, there's Augustine. Augustine, Augustine and mm-hmm. Stephen. Yep. Uh, those guys took such great care of us, and yep. their their teams did such a great job. I mean, it was it was a great event. They had big screen TVs playing sports yeah. center and right. eventually they put golf on. I think I was like, okay, it's time for a nap, right. <laughs> but it was, it was so great. Uh, and that resort, that location is so cool. Um, it's got such a great, uh, great vibe over there. It's really kind of nice. And the whole staff just takes great care of uh, whether you're a resort guest or whether you're just visiting for the day, they take great care of you. So it, it was an, an outstanding event. We talked about it over on park hoppers and, and it was great. Yeah. Had a great time. Yeah. Uh, it's like Disney customer service on steroids. Right. You know, because they have to go above and beyond. But mm-hmm. all right, enough of them. Uh, let's move on to some other stuff. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. 
Uh, I. This was a little quick uh, story I heard about. The new Splash Mountain is now open during Extra Magic Hours. So Splash Mountain will be open uh, for Extra Magic Hours starting back on June 13th, and I think it's going through the summer. Uh, I didn't, I guess, why did they not have Splash Mountain on Extra Magic Hours? I guess is the question. Uh, And why are they now starting... Um, you know, extra magic hours on the, well, it's the summertime. That's why. Right. Uh, so I guess splash away on splash mountain. Yeah. I, I didn't understand this, uh, either may, you know, it, it hasn't been down for refurbishment that I've seen. I don't think so. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I don't think they've added anything to it. Have they? I don't think so. So, so this is one of those cases where, uh, so, you know, so there, some people are saying because pirates is going down. Oh well. So they decided to throw this up. That's a that's a good um, that's a good replacement. But it should have been up anyway. Yeah, I'm thinking it should have been open no matter what. But that's just me. You know what do I know? Uh, I'm just a I'm just a dude that likes to go to the parks. <laughs> but hey, that's Mountain. great. You know that's great. Um, and and I can confirm that Pirates is closed. <laughs> yeah, we were there the other day, and it was no bueno. Yeah. Um, but that's great. You, now you can do a Splash Mountain, and and you can ride the wildest ride next to the wildest ride in the wilderness. One will get you wet. One will get make you dizzy. <laughs> all right so uh just a reminder kids in case you have not been listening to this podcast or f- fell off the planet earth for a little bit maybe you went somewhere where there is no internet mm. uh just to remind you that the new summer fun started june 17th and will run through september 7th where guests can experience all the frozen fun that they can get their little arms around. So some of the things that you can enjoy is the Frozen Royal Welcome, which is a little processional. Mm -hmm. There's Olaf's Summer Cool Down. So it's a little stage show with Olaf and his Mm -hmm. guests. Uh, Let's not forget Frozen Fever. So this is new this year where guests will be able to head into the ABC Sound Studio to enjoy a special screening of the new animated short Frozen Fever, along with a peek behind the scenes of the making of the film. That would make me tear up, John. (laughs) (laughs) So you get to go see an animated short. And you get to see how they made the animated, animated short. short. It, should be short s- it should be shorter than the animated short. Right. And if they're smart, they have a, 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 a bunch of those snow geese, those little yeah, miniature snowballs right outside. Oh, yeah. They, totally. they do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then the first time in forever, the Frozen sing-along celebration is back. And yes. it has a new place. It is in the old uh, American Idol Theater, which has now been renamed the Hyperion Theater. Nice. They can't get away from that name. They love naming things Hyperion. That's a great name. It is a great name, but they were going to name it the Hyperion Wharf, and that disappeared, right? Now we got Disney Springs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to uh, finish this one, okay. and I got, a, I got a theory. All right, and there is the Frozen Fireworks. Now, I have not seen the—I did not see these last year, but I've heard these are second to the Star Wars uh, fireworks. These are just as good. And cool. I think— Fireworks in the studios is a great thing. I love that. I think it's a great place for it. Uh, I really enjoy them there. So I may have to bite the bullet and go see it this year. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, let me know and I'll go, I'll go with you. Okay. We'll, we'll ooh and ah together and sweat because it'll be hot. It'll be hot, right. It'll be 95 degrees at 9.15 at night when the yeah. fireworks start. Exactly. So here's my theory. And, and uh you know, and we can shoot it down and everything. I still think that that we they have not announced yet what Hollywood Studios is going to transform into. They have not made the announcement of the name, correct? Correct. Correct. My theory is they're going to call it Disney's Hollywood Adventure, mm-hmm. and it's going to have very similar uh, naming as uh, Disney's California Adventure. Mm-hmm. So California Adventure has, you know, um, you know, Red Train. Right. Red Hyperion, car. 
Red Trolley, thank you. Red Trolley, Hyperion Theater. Wow. There's going to be a lot of very similar names popping up. Mm. Plus, Hyperion Theater is just a great name anyway. But I really think that that's just part of the the whole overlay that's going to become uh, not a clone, obviously, but it's going to have very similar naming to uh, Disney's California Adventure, and it's going to be Disney's Hollywood Adventure or something very similar to that. What do you think? I think that's that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that would be good. I, I would uh, I would accept that. Uh, I recently heard, you know, everybody was uh, hoping that D23 uh, was going to bring in the parks announcement of all the things that are going to happen at this studio. I recently heard some rumors, uh, you know, from some pretty good reliable sources uh, that the board has not yet approved what is going to happen? What Star Wars land thing is going to be built? Uh, be built because they don't think it was ambitious enough. So what Imagineers brought to the board was not ambitious enough. I find that crazy to believe. <laughs> I do as well. Um, you know, this is the second time. The first presentation, uh, they were waiting for the kind of the Lucas dust to settle. Right. Uh, and then the second presentation was supposed to be, you know, after all the assets were in place, but, uh, apparently it was not enough muster to pass the boards out. Apparently there's going to be no announcement in August, so we're going to have to wait yet longer. Yeah. Well, they're going to do what they did with new fantasy land. It was so amazing and so much. And then every few months or so they would scale it back and scale it back and scale it back, you know? Yeah. So whatever. I I think that uh, I think that changing Hollywood Studios is not a horrible idea. Uh, I'll go on the record and please don't hate, uh, but this is my opinion. I'm glad they got rid of the hat. Yeah. Um, my the only downside of that is is now we have the stage that's almost going to be a permanent fixture. It yeah. feels like to me. Uh, the only thing that I would be really grumpy grumpy about is if they changed it like Disney's Frozen Adventure, which seems to me. Like that's all that's going on there between Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Man, it's frozen mm. all the time. Yeah. But um, yeah. I think it'd be cool. I, I think D twenty three would be interesting. I still think there's going to be some type of announcement then. If not, it'll be a at a shareholders meeting not too soon after that. But that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. See, I I don't think you know. In my opinion, uh, yes, I agree that the hat uh, should be gone. It, it didn't belong there in the first place. And number two is the stage doesn't belong there either. There are plenty of places in that park where you can put on a stage show. You have the Lights Motor Action Stage, which is underutilized. Uh, you have the Phantasmic Theater, only used once a day, sometimes twice if you're lucky. Yep. Uh, and then the Beauty and the Beast uh, yep. stage. So you have plenty of places to put on a performance in between the other things that are happening there. And, right. you, and you don't need to have that big, ugly stage in the middle of the park. I think it creates a big bottleneck, especially uh, for these Frozen events. Well, we were there. Let's see. What day were we there? We were there on uh, Friday. I was there Friday. And they were doing their big Frozen event on the stage. And there was probably only 25 people there. Wow. That's so it was not it was not super. Of course, it was a Friday. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there wasn't a lot of people there. I, you know, I think that... the I finally think that we're getting to the point where we're frozen out a little bit. I think that people love it and they like it. Uh, but it's just, it's so much, you know, and there's so many other things that they could do there, but we could talk about that for days. Yeah. yeah. Let's move over to a, another park. That's Tony's favorite oh, over, yeah. at, over at animal kingdom. So favorite. I only go <laughs> once a year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So first, let's talk about the easy one to talk about. New Creature Comforts opened. Uh, Creature Comforts over at Disney Animal Kingdom theme park uh, is open. It's uh, newly reimagined with food and beverage. And the menu now includes Starbucks coffee and espresso beverages, Frappuccino blended beverages, and uh, signature breakfast sandwiches and pastries, as well as a few uh, classics uh, crafted by the Disney chefs. Now, the cool thing about this place is they are offering a special uh, fl uh, white flat latte, I believe, if I'm saying that correctly, uh, that is going towards uh, helping one of the endangered species that uh, Disney is is getting behind. So that's kind of cool. So if you go and you buy this special drink, then a portion of the proceeds goes towards an endangered species. Uh, this makes now the last uh, Starbucks to open. Uh, 
it was Magic Kingdom, then at Epcot, then Hollywood Studios, and then now uh, the Animal Kingdom has its Starbucks open. So that's really cool. I'm excited about this. I need to go over and get my cup because I have a cup from all the parks. Um, so I'm pretty jacked about this. Are you Are you happy now that Starbucks is officially in Animal Kingdom? At least it gives me a reason to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a good thing for that endangered animal. At the prices that Starbucks charges for coffee, at least this animal's got a shot. I mean, it's $7 or $8 uh, latte. Yeah, absolutely. Know. Yeah. yeah it's it pretty... depends on the percentage you're giving them, but at least it's got a shot at right. surviving. <laughs> yeah, but it's. I think this is a good. I think one of the things that that Disney's done really well, and Starbucks too. I don't. I don't want to take all the credit uh, and just give it to Disney. There was a lot of people when they announced that Starbucks was going to come into the parks that people were really concerned that the Disney touch, the Disney magic, the things that made those areas Disney, like the bakery, the Main Street Bakery, um, would be um, would disappear. And I think Disney and Starbucks have worked really, really well together to uh, to keep the the theme park ness of the stores very accurate and authentic. You know, I, I've not been to the Creature Comforts yet, but the pictures are astounding. I think it's great, and all the locations have been really cool. Yeah. I think my favorite. I think my favorite is the one over at Hollywood Studios, which is what the Red Trolley Cafe. Wow. But, yeah. Nomenclature yeah. man's killing me tonight. Yeah, it is. But yeah, I, I think that that's that's probably my favorite one because I just I, Hollywood Studios is, is still one of my favorite parks of of the four. But um, but yeah, so Creature Conference is open. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having my first uh, Starbucks over there. I think that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be good. But the big news, the big Mama Jamma news <laughs> for me was the new Zuri Sweet Shop has opened at the Harambe market. Uh, so this is the latest addition to the Harambe market. Zuri sweet shop is an extension of the Mombasa marketplace and is sure to become a must stop shopping location for guests at Disney's animal kingdom theme park. Uh, the traditional candy counter with an African Twist will uh, it features 80 exclusive food items inspired by the sights, sounds and flavors of Africa. We're going to get back to that in just a second. Guests can buy assorted bulk trail mixes, bottles of the signature sweet and spicy sauce from Flame Tree Barbecue, uh, themed sweets from The Lion King, and much, much more. In addition to these flavorful treats, Zuri Sweet Shop also includes items for the home, such as decorative blessing baskets, which are beautiful handcrafted baskets crafted by artisans from Africa, as well as an assortment of different African wines. Now, the items that have really sparked a little bit of a controversy that I just can't get over is um, they have in their sweet case, they have, you know, your typical... Um, cupcakes and cookie selections, uh, Disney themed, of course. They have the Disney uh, Mickey Mouse head at candied apples and and even some candied apples that are monkey face, which are very cute. But the items that are really garnering uh, the most attention are a series of um, well, they're calling it match the species, and well, you have elephant, giraffe, um, hippopotamus. And there's one other animal uh, that they've crafted uh, chocolate dessert treat items in the shape of animal sh- uh, p- uh, poop. Poop. Say it, poop. 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 It's, it's poop. Poop shaped. Poop shaped dessert. Who wants poop shaped dessert? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, um, so honey, yeah. Honey, can we go to the animal kingdom and get some shit? <laughs> <laughs> come on That's, oh my gosh it's I such a terrible I, thing i can't believe it okay so now my thought is that disney disney really got hit really hard when they opened the um the Diagon alley over at universal i don't think that's a big secret and the thing about that is, is in their in their uh, Weasleys wizarding wheezes they have a lot of really edgy things on sale and i thought that a Disney Imagineer probably had it, you know, I'm going to come up with a really edgy idea. We're going to do elephant dropping 
chocolate balls. That'd be great. Let, let's do some giraffe poop. Hey, what's hippopotamus poop look like? Let's, let's make some stuff that looks like that. I can't imagine anybody in their right mind going and buying these and saying, here, honey, eat, eat, eat some poop. It's I, okay to eat poop at Disney. I, I would have loved to have been in the meeting where the bakery people were trying to sell this to the marketing people right. and saying, hey, we made desserts that look like giraffe poop. <laughs> what do you think? How, how, how do you think we can market this? Right. <laughs> They're this, going, excuse us? <laughs> yeah. This goes to show you that that whoever's in charge of the parks now – because uh, I was going to say Tom Staggs. It's not Tom Staggs anymore. I have since lost track of who's in charge. Well, the president is George Caligridis. Yeah, this is this is proof that I don't think George is really that hands-on in the day-to-day. No. I would love to be proved wrong, but I just can't imagine somebody saying, George, we've got this great idea. You're going to love it. What, what is it? I'm, I want to hear it. Well, well what we're going to do animal poop. Uh, we're you going to recycle it. No, 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 no. We're going to sell animal poop candy, you know? Yeah. I don't, I, yeah. I don't think he would have gone. Oh yeah. That's a great idea. We should do that. Why don't we just bag the real stuff and just sell it to the guests? <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble and make something look like poop, just sell them the real stuff. No, listen, I always said you can sell a five pound bag of poop to somebody. This yeah. may be the occasion where it could actually happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. if it, listen, if they could put their Disney name on it, boom, and then sell it to you at five pound bag of poop, I rest my case. It's always been a running joke. Yeah. You know, if you, if it's, if it's, if it's Mickey shaped poop, right. you slap a Disney Mickey ears on yep. it, somebody will buy it. I agree. Well, I guess we're testing that theory. So we are. We are. All right, mm-hmm. <laughs> enough potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally, for now. So, John, let me ask you, Okay. what what are you doing for the 4th of July this year? What are Gosh. your 4th of July plans? Uh, I think I'm probably uh, not going into any of the Disney parks. <laughs> You're a smart man. Thank you. You're a smart man. But I can say that because I'm a, ca- because I'm a pass holder. That's right. <laughs> but in case you are... Let me tell you what's happening over here at Walt Disney World for the 4th of July. Whole new spectacular firework celebration. I doubt it. Anyway. (laughs) So, you know, Disney doesn't, I guess they can't have fireworks just on one day. So they are going to have their spectacular on July 3rd and July 4th, which is a good idea. Uh, because I, this is what it does. It gives you the chance to see two different parks version of the 4th of July fireworks, which if you are staying on property, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're going to have their patriotic uh, fireworks on July 3rd and July 4th. Uh, It'll be a four. This is the uh, Magic Kingdom version. It'll be a 14 minute fireworks spectacular that rockets into the air above the Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom on both nights, the 3rd and the 4th at 10 p.m. With Disney's Celebrate America, a 4th of July concert in the sky. And typically it's all those patriotic songs uh, with a lot of fireworks. Right. And there's perimeter fireworks. There's fireworks all over the place. There's fireworks on the island, Seven Seas Lagoon. There's, there's just stuff going all over the place. And it is a little bit longer than normal, I think. Mm-hmm. Over at the studios, the coolest summer ever, dance party will lead up to the rockin' 4th of July <laughs> celebration. <laughs> Fireworks pyrotechnic rock and roll trip across America where the DJ kicks things off at 5.45 p.m. and keeps the party going until the fireworks at 10.15 p.m. So, if you're at the Magic Kingdom and the show's from 10 to 10.14, you have one minute... <laughs> <laughs> to get in your car and get over to the studios to see the 1015 show with the Hollywood studios. <laughs> or, or, or if you're having dinner at California Grill. Yeah, just turn your you, head. <laughs> you have one minute to go from one side of the restaurant <laughs> right. all the way over to the other one. And you can see the Hollywood studios fireworks. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's what I would do. Now, over at Epcot, they're going to have uh, an awe-inspiring nighttime spectacular, Illuminations, Reflection of Earth, Earth, which will feature a special finale 
with a bit of red, white, and blue flair. And this will all start at 9 p.m. on July 4th and July 4th. Uh, so you can probably see this and then head over to the Magic Kingdom or the studios. Mm-hmm. All right. Over at that. All right. So then the Voices of Liberty will perform a 4th of July concert at the American Garden Theater at 1230, 145, and 3 p.m. And in the American Adventure Pavilion at 415 and 5 p.m. The celebration proceeds on a high note with the Sounds Like Summer concert uh, series on stage at the American Garden Theater with Don't Look Back, a Boston tribute band, with performances at 5.15, 6.30, 7.45, and 9 p.m. There you go, John. I think that is a rockin' 4th of July party on 3 and 4. I, if I, if, I would definitely try and see two of these. If it was me, I'd go see the Magic Kingdom show. Yeah. On the Poly Beach, but you didn't hear that from me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on uh, the other night, I'd go see the uh, Hollywood Studios. Yeah, I agree. And 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 I will I will say one thing that you you definitely need to do if you're going to be in town, and if you have the ability to get to Epcot to go see the Voices of Liberty on the Fourth of July. I don't know if they do it on the third. I don't know if they do it on the fifth. But on the Fourth of July, and if you're very 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 lucky, you. You may get a chance to see something that only happens once in a blue moon. Uh, the Voices of Liberty, um, it's not always the same, you know, 10 people, however many are in the singing ensemble, eight people, I think. Um, they have different, you know, rotations because everybody can't do every performance every day. So on that one day, they'll bring in all of the voices and uh, they'll do a regular voice to show eight person troop will come out and they'll sing on the floor in the rotunda, just like normal. And then if they're doing it this year, they'll do a, a grand performance uh, of the battle hymn of the Republic. And it'll start out with the, the regular eight uh, and they'll start singing the battle hymn of the Republic. And then at one point, the rest of the voices in the upstairs balcony will come forward and they will finish the song. And I'm talking about it right now and I'm literally getting goose flesh. I rem- I was there a couple years ago when they did it. It's unbelievable. Um, so I would, I would highly encourage you to always get a, get a, a chance to see the voices of Liberty. But if you, if you could go on the fourth, I hope that they're doing it this year. Um, but that's worth it to me. I would, I would definitely go on the beach with Tony. Uh, but you didn't hear that from me to go see it at, uh, at magic kingdom. Illuminations would probably be pretty cool. Um, I'm not so sure I'm really into a rock and fourth of July celebration because my fear is that, you know, it would be brought to you by frozen and Hannah Montana and all those Disney singers. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. You know, if you can't see it from the, the power booth, uh, you can see it from the TTC is another good place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, get like near the boat area. Uh, you know, don't, you know, not, I'm not talking about the TTC parking lot, but get a little closer, you know, monorail area. Uh, another good place is also the Grand Floridian. Yep. Uh, if you get out to like Narcosis, uh, they pipe in the music there as well. Uh, and, you know, even the, you know, there's places like at the Contemporary, the little sky bridge that connects Bay Lake Tower to the Contemporary is another good place. You can see, you know, there's no music. Um, right. But, you know, at least you can see the fireworks. Uh, California Grill, if you go for dinner or even drinks, uh, they may not let you up there for drinks on the 4th of July. You may have to have a reservation, actually, uh, get a table. Uh, but you can certainly try that tactic. Uh, so there are places, you know, where you don't have to be in the park uh, and can still see the Magic Kingdom stuff. The Hollywood Studios, you can almost see them from outside. So you don't even have to go in the park. Just take the bus to the studio, stand right outside the gate. And this way, when it's done, you'll be the first one back on the bus. That's right. <laughs> and, That's right. <laughs> and you'll be gone. Uh, Illuminations is tough. You can some, you can see glimpses of them from the uh, little bridge uh, that connects the boardwalk to Epcot that some people you'll see standing up there and you right. can see little glimpses. You're not going to see the, the ball of fire and some other things, but at least you'll get to see the finale tag. Right. Um, so there are places that you can go without going right. in the park. Or if you're stuck in traffic, you can see it on, on Lake Buena Vista Boulevard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've exactly. been there before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. All right. So, um, there's a new, 
test program that Disney has released. It's a new direct transportation test for guests at select resorts. So from June 14th through the 30th, select guests at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, and Disney's Contemporary Resort have been asked to participate in a pilot dining test that will provide direct trans- transportation to other resort, hotel, signature restaurants, including... Artist Point at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, Geco at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, and the Flying Fish at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. And as a part of the test, guests will receive complimentary round-trip taxi vouchers that will be delivered to their rooms upon arrival. And by doing this, Disney hopes to better understand guest interest in resort-to-resort dining. And Tony, I cannot help but think this is a direct response to Lyft and Uber. Yes, it's got to be. And here's the thing. Uh, one is they're only using deluxe resorts, and they're only using signature restaurants in this test, which I find just bad form. Uh, but, you know, this is what I was thinking. If Disney were to get into this, you know, resort-to-resort game, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at 5 or 6 o'clock, all the DVC vans that they used to shuttle guests around to the DVC Welcome Center can be used. I mean, they got a fleet of probably twenty to fifty vans that sit in Saratoga Spring all night that right. can be used to take guests from resort to resort, where right. you don't have to get in a stinky, slimy little Mears cab. Right. To I, I mean, all right. Some cabs are clean. A lot of cabs are not, and most cab drivers are not clean. <laughs> Don't speak English and may not even know where the resort is. I mean, I've gotten in a cab and told somebody to go to a resort and they were like, where? They, uh, you know, they only know one thing, airport and hotel. That's it. For all of you taxi drivers out there, please send all of your cards and letters to <laughs> Tony Calsanova, Disney by the numbers dot com. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Bring it on. I, I'd enjoy the mail. I, I, I think this has to happen. This has to happen. Uh, sooner rather than later, because um, I, I think a lot of people are doing this. They they are mm-hmm. dining at other restaurants, especially when they have the free dining. There are only so many restaurants in your resort, right? Right, right, absolutely. And I and I think that you know I I appreciate that Disney's trying really hard to. Uh, to not have a bunch of Lyft and Uber drivers running around because, you know, they, they can't make a cut of that. Uh, and they're trying really hard to, you know, work with their partner, which is mirrors. I get that. So what Disney should do is, is, is put some time and thought process into it and then partner with Uber or partner with Lyft and just say, Hey, you know, we want to, we want a cadre of people that will only do the parks and sign up and they'll get, you know, they'll get X amount of dollars and, and they could, you know, Disney wants to run them through their own version of a background check. I, I, you know, use the technology that's out there, use the people who will be willing to do it. You know, I, I, I'm very interested in Lyft and Uber. I would be willing to sign up for this to drive around. I would love that. Are you yeah. kidding? What yeah. What would it be like if you have somebody that drives up? About hi there. I'm with uh, Disney Transportation. My name's John, and I'd like to take you over to the Artist Point. Yeah. And then for the next ten or fifteen minutes, I'm talking about Disney as an impassioned right. fan. Oh. Yeah, I think that would would serve them so much better than trying to work yeah. this thing out where, you know, mm-hmm. Disney's going to spend more money and give you free taxi service. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. I agree. you know, this is silly. Yeah. Your pass holder dollars at work. Exactly, exactly. There are uh, there are a hundred ways that they can do this, but uh, Mir's cab is not my favorite choice. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm not a big fan of theirs. I don't I don't think it's a very well run company. But that's all another podcast, right? All right, moving on. Let's hop over uh, to our friends over at Tokyo Disneyland. And this week in Tokyo Disney Resort, they announced plans for the Tokyo Seas 15th anniversary, which will kick off next year. The Tokyo Disney Seas 15th anniversary, the Year of Wishes celebrate celebration will begin April 15, 2016, and will run through March 17, 2017. Because the celebration can't last only a couple months. Right. <laughs> you right. Got, we got to go all year. It's almost a year of wishes. Right. So the celebration will focus on wishes and dreams, which will symbolize by crystals that will decorate the park. Uh, Disney characters will share their own wishes in the new show, 
called Crystal Wishes Journey at the Mediterranean Harbor. Very mm. nice. Uh, big band beat, Broadway music, uh, Broadway music theater popular show will premiere in a new version on the first day of the celebration, making the first time this show has changed since its opening in July 2006. Wow. Uh, once again, whatever it takes, we don't care. Just spend the money, make new shows, make new parades, have a good party. That's yeah. what I love about the Tokyo uh, parks. Yep, they get it. They really do. They so, get it. Uh, I think there was some pictures. I'll see if I can dig this uh, picture up of what uh, some of these things will look like. And once again, they look awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm very interested to see what these crystal things are. I'm, yeah, that just that doesn't make. I mean, that's interesting. I mean, I can't think of any Disney property that involves crystals. Yeah. So I, you know, healing crystals. <laughs> it's weird man yeah but hey you know that's cool i mean we're gonna we're gonna do the, these crystals and i'm sure that they'll come up with this something that can be traded that people will love to get their hands on that will all oh, yeah. desire greatly over here in the yeah. states but yeah. i i think you know every piece of news coming out of tokyo disneyland is just killing me that i just i really want to go and experience this for myself we should uh that would be an interesting thing because uh I guess it's a Tokyo culture kind of thing. They love to collect a lot of stuff. Not really, you know, they'll collect pins, but they'll collect vinylation. They'll collect those little tum-tum things. They'll, you, yeah. know, you know, they're all over and they go nuts. I mean, they, they'll they line up for days for some of that stuff. So we should have, uh, I, I have to see if we can get uh, Patricia back on. That'd be cool. Uh, our friend over at TDR Explorer. And uh, see if she can explain some of that to us. That'd be cool. Yep. So while we're still out and about, we're going to jump over to Disneyland Paris, which has recently announced the upcoming arrival of the Jedi Training Academy, which is, uh, as we know, it's a, it's a new, uh, for them, it's a new interactive show. Uh, so to be ready for it, the theater at Videopolis, which will host the show starting the 11th of July, is undergoing a unique refurbishment from head to toe, uh, basically from lighting to additional accessibility. So um, if you push the doors, you will note there's a whole uh, complex located in Discovery Land, including the Hi Cafe Hyperion, and its entrance over which hangs uh, the historical airship uh, and is also being uh, renewed. Uh, Francois, jeez, uh, why'd you give me the French one? Uh, Francois... Gamaz, senior manager at the construction and engineering department, updates uh, us by saying that the, uh, on the Operation uh, Hyperion, the 22-meter-long airship inspired by the Disney movie The Island on Top of the World is one of the symbols of Discovery Land. For a long time, it was the largest animated showpiece in Disney parks. Uh, just a few days ago, the airship was once again unveiled. It's bright colors gleaming through the scaffolding by July. Hyperion will look brand new and restored to its original grandeur. Now I've been very lucky and I got to go to Disneyland Paris a couple years ago. And what you kind of have to imagine their version of Tomorrowland is what this discovery land is. So imagine going to Disneyland and uh, you walk into the park and you hang that right turn. Like you're going to go to Tomorrowland, And it's the same, same way, except you go into discovery land and discovery land is an amalgam of like a steampunk look. Uh, and everything looks very much inspired by Jules Verne. So this airship that they're talking about is this giant dirigible, this helium balloon looking thing. It looks like a giant airship that's steampunk driven in it. It's mechanical and and it, and it starts outside the building and you go into the video uh, into the cafe Hyperion and then it continues through and there's moving pieces everywhere. It's really gorgeous. And the thing is, is when you walk into this place, it's split into two different sections. The first section is is your typical you know, quick service dining. You, you walk in, you place your order, um, you get your food. And, and then on the wall that you, you're walking, uh, parallel to when you walk in is, is where the soda machines and the napkin dispensers are. And then as you keep walking, it's very much like we have where we have the, um, Oh my gosh. 
in Tomorrowland, who is the animatronic keyboard player that we have? Sunny Eclipse. Yeah, the Sunny Eclipse show. Mm-hmm. We kind of have the same concept, but it's but the Paris version is much bigger. It's a huge theater. So you literally can sit and eat and watch the show. So what they're putting in is this Jedi Training Academy, which is really interesting um, because they're still running the original version of Star Tours. Um, whereas we have the giant you know, walking at at, they have a huge X wing fighter. Hmm. Uh, so it's really cool. I mean, so you walk underneath this X wing. So star Wars does have uh, a place at Disneyland Paris. So, so that's really cool that they're, they're bringing Jedi Academy there. I think that'd be really neat. So, uh, as we're talking about this cafe Hyperion, um, and this, this giant dirigible, uh, the, the airship, uh, that icon for all the guests, uh, gives you an idea of the ambitious work that's going to be carried out throughout the complex, which includes upgrades to the restaurant. Cafe Hyperion is the largest counter service restaurant in the park. The theater area of Videopolis, which is part of that cafe, uh, and the surrounding show areas in that land. Uh, the first thing that one's going to notice when you uh, is with the airship are the warm colors used to repaint all the facades. Um, studies for and uh, the new canopy for the entrance uh, and the f- uh, of the future show are being made. Uh, the checkerboard floor is being redone, uh, and the large marble compass is being renovated. Uh, and Francois says that the goal is to give the iconic entrance that symbolizes the main entrance to the restaurant an entirely new treatment. And on either side of the entrance, terraces will be adapted for people who have uh, disabilities and special needs. So that's kind of cool that they're they're kind of retrofitting it and retrograding it and bringing it up to, as we would say, you know, ADA code. Uh, they don't have that over there, but they're they're making some changes over there, making it a little bit easier for people to get into and out of. And they're bringing the um, the Jedi Academy into the Videopolis. So that's kind of neat. Yeah. Uh, again, we should all go over there. We, I'm telling you, dude, Disney Parks podcast should do a world tour. We we should that would start. Be interesting. We should start with the four parks here. Mm-hmm. Fly over California. Do a couple days in California Adventure. Do a couple days at Disneyland. Fly over. Do a few days at, at Tokyo Disney Sea, uh, and then uh, Tokyo Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And then maybe by then, you know, Shanghai will be open. Right. Hang, uh, there's Hong a, Kong, Shanghai, and Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Shanghai, mm-hmm. and then flip on over and do Paris. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they've got the two parks in Paris. They've got the Walt Disney Studio. Uh, park as well as the Disneyland parks. I mean, you know, I think this would be like a month. We just take a whole month off of work. We'll just do, we should just do it, man. I'm telling you, we have cool. no money to do this, but we should do it anyway. <laughs> Kickstarter. That's yeah, what Kickstarter. we should do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start a Kickstarter. We want to travel the world. Come fly with us. If you had wings, had wings, had wings. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, talking about uh, places we haven't gone or probably won't go to in anytime soon. Uh, Hong Kong Disneyland is getting the frozen treatment. Yay. Let's let it go. All right, this summer, Hong Kong Disneyland is going to have a frozen summer starting June 11th to August 30th where guests can step into the enchanting frozen village to celebrate the frozen festivities together with friendly villagers. Mm. Take your pick from the all wintry activities and enjoy the frozen festival show under the magical softly falling snow created by Queen Elsa. Sing along to Let It Go with 300 other guests and relish in the special frozen refreshments and merchandise making it the coolest summer ever in Hong Kong. I'm telling you, man, we should make we should start making this podcast a frozen drinking game. Every time we say the word frozen, somebody has to drink. Ding. Take a drink. <laughs> People would be drunk. We'd be hammered by the first 10 minutes. Yeah, telling exactly. you, every week, it's just more frozen. And, and it's in uh, I, I, it's in every park now. I, I think this officially tops off every park. Uh, Animal Kingdom. It's not Animal Kingdom. No, I'm saying like here, Paris, California, Hong Kong, Disneyland, Disney City. I yep. think everybody's got a little something frozen. A little something, <laughs> something frozen. All right, your frozen adventure uh, commences with a special musical performance at the Crown Jewel Theater. You will meet Eric and Aria, two townspeople who will lead you through the frozen festival show and gather everyone together to sing along to your favorite and most memorable songs from the song, which include. Do you want to build a snowman? Love is an open door in summer and the 20 minute experience on the magical uh, snow 
created by Elsa, an exciting Let It Go finale. Now, I, I feel like I've seen or heard about this show before somewhere. Yes, maybe somewhere. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. A Hyperion Theater? Hmm. Oh, maybe. Maybe. All right, so the Frozen Adventure would not be complete without playing in the snow. I think mm. we had this. Where have we had this before? Hollywood Studios, man. Yeah. They just packed it up and moved it over there. Oh, yeah, dude. That was a horrible experience. Yeah. <laughs> so you can enjoy an authentic winter experience in the middle of summer yep. right here in the bustling Frozen Festival Square. Elsa has used her powers to create an enchanted frozen village as a summer getaway for guests. Other than playing in the snow and building your very own snowman, you can <laughs> jump on a toboggan at Olaf's Ice Slide featuring four ice chutes. The experience continues with a snow interactive game, available soon, where you can try your skill at launching snowballs to scare Marshmallow away and become the village hero. Mm. Make sure you don't forget to take pictures with your life-size figures and the lovely Sven inside Frozen Festival Square, as well as meet the huggable, snowy celebrity Olaf. He Mm. loves summer. He loves warm hugs. (laughs) <laughs> uh, uh, I, I feel like I've read this all before. We just started. Uh, Cut and paste, the, the, man. Yeah. Cut and paste. Yeah. That's Cut what paste. They, they moved it from one place to another. Yeah. They packed it up, moved it over. <laughs> uh, there's a whole procession of a lot of things. But also, don't forget to visit the Animation Academy, where our talented artists are waiting to teach you how to draw Olaf and complete your Frozen-themed experience at the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort oh, this geez. summer. Now, all right, if you can't draw Olaf, that's we're talking three circles. Well, I look at it and from a the, couple sticks. <laughs> yeah, I look at it from the uh, from the animator's point of view. We're not allowed to draw anything other than Olaf for the next sixty days. Yes. Nope, nothing but Olaf. Olaf, Olaf, Olaf. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I I get it, but you know, how many versions of three circles can you draw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I don't. You know, we didn't we didn't talk about it, uh, and, and, I, and I don't want to take you away from Hong Kong mm. Frozen. But speaking of the Animation Academy, did you see the announcement that they're going to be closing it and refurbishing it? No, I did not. <laughs> So what they've done is, well, hang on, before we go into that, are you okay with us moving forward yeah, or do you yeah, want to keep no, talking about this? Larry? No, we're done with Hong Kong. Yeah, we're done with, we're done with frozen Hong Kong. So what I saw the other day um, was they're basically closing the animation courtyard. Well, they're closing the animation academy area. So all of the inside meet and greets for characters are pretty much uh, closing for a period of time. And what they're doing is, is they're creating more of those academy areas where they can have more than one artist showing people how to draw the different characters. So I, I don't know if you've been there recently, but it's it's, it's pretty crazy. busy. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. always a line into the gift shop. I know. Uh, and so what they've decided to do is, I think if I'm if I'm reading it correctly, they're going to take out. They're probably going to take away the the story. The you're in the story with Bell. Uh-huh. That half of those kiosks aren't really working anyway, mm. and they're going to take away some of the meet and greet areas, and they're going to reposition some things, and they're going to put in at least one or two or three, maybe more of those, you know, sit down bay areas where you can have more people through, in a, in a setting. Which I think is is much needed. I think there's more people that would like to do that than to sit and try to do the whole computer's going to take your picture and, and you're not going to be able to hear it. Story time with Bell and you know I, I know for I know uh, that they've already moved the Incredibles meet and greet to another location. That was one of the areas that right. is going away. I don't know if they're going to keep the area where you can meet Baymax mm-hmm. in uh, Hero. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Although I think that they should, because that's a pretty cool area. Uh, and right. just meeting, meeting Baymax is so cool in and of yeah. itself. But uh, I read that the other day, so I'm really excited about that. I think that's great. That is that is Sarah's. That's Park Hopper Sid's. That's like her hands down favorite thing to do. If if I if I ever wanted to literally ditch my wife for a few hours, I could just leave her there, and she'll just go through again and again and again, and she'll just she'll draw all those characters yeah. all day long. Is she good at it? Because I am horrible at drawing. She's she's artistic. I'm not. I'm horrible. Mm. Uh, the only artistic gene that I got was uh, I can play drums. Mm. Uh, that's it. I, I've tried to draw uh, Jiminy Cricket. I tried to draw Win- uh, Winnie the Pooh. Actually, Winnie the Pooh came out looking a lot like the uh, the stuff that they're selling over Animal Kingdom. Nice. I, yeah, I, I'm. It's almost like I'm drawing with my left hand. That's how bad. You know, these characters look when I'm done yeah. with them. 
And, and I love it. They keep saying, you know, lightly, draw lightly, lightly. draw lightly, exactly. draw lightly. And I'm like, yeah. I can't even go in the same, you know, I mean, he draws like a circle in the same thing. My circle gets bigger and bigger. It gets smaller and smaller. It's just like, yeah. I'm, it's like a drunken left-handed monkey is trying to draw that stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 My circles are always oblong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just can't do a, a real circle. Yeah. So Mickey Mouse is right out for me. I can't yeah. draw Mickey Mouse. Yeah. My so. Mickey Mouse looks cockeyed. Anyway. Cock guide Mickey Mouse. So that's our that's our news for the week. <laughs> and now the Disney Parks Podcast Infotainment segment. Uh, we are going to move into some infotainment. Yes. And the thing about this is really uh, ironic is it's raining at my house and now it's starting to rain at Tony's house. So when you come to Walt Disney World or any Disney theme park or really any theme park, yeah. it's never, especially at Disney, though, in, in Florida, it's really never a matter of. If it's going to rain, it's usually a matter of when it's going to rain. So if you're thinking that you're going to plan this great vacation and it's never going to rain, odds are you are incorrect. So the question that we wanted to ponder today was it's raining. Now what do you do? What are some ideas that you can do? Uh, when it's raining, what happens? How does it work? What are some things to do? Uh, so yeah. this is some suggestions on when it's raining. And I will tell you, when it rains is the best time to go to the parks because right. they clear out. I, a classic case of that was the 24-hour event this past May or June or whenever it was. I mean, it rained and the park emptied out and it was like, yay. I'm free. Yeah. So these are things either to do, like it was John saying, to do or to not do or to bring or not to bring. The first thing, and this only recently happened to me, I guess I guess I never stuck around, maybe, or maybe I was inside, but I was on Main Street in the Magic Kingdom, and they have a rainy day cavalcade mm. where they, they bring out some characters, you know, not like the three o'clock parade, but some characters in covered vehicles and things, you know, they sing rainy day songs and as they, you know, march down and there's cast members in their rain gear with umbrellas and stuff. It's actually kind of cute and kind of fun to right. watch. If you've never seen it, uh, you can Google it. Go to the Magic Kingdom when it's raining. It, if, as long as it's raining uh, for about 20, 30 minutes or so, maybe a little bit more, they'll uh, whip out this parade uh, and, and do it. And here's a fun, interesting thing. It usually rains around 3 o'clock, which is parade time. So they're already kind of in parade mode. They just turn it over to this rainy day cavalcade and, you know, run that. Um, because, you know, obviously the characters can't be on the rain, though. Yours already in a bad mood, so just imagine them all wet and yeah. soaking. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty good. But, well, one suggestion that you definitely want to do whenever you visit any of the theme parks is you definitely want to pack rain gear and store it in a locker, and that's the best. That's the best suggestion, and uh, as just a, a tip to help you save a little bit of money, unless you really just want to buy a poncho at Disney World, please go to like walmart or target or you know a, a neighborhood drugstore you can get a poncho for like two bucks and get ponchos that are fit for your whole family so you got adult size for the adults and kid size for the kids the the ponchos at walt disney world will set you back what nine ten bucks i think they're closer to 12 now yeah, it's yeah. it's silly. And, you know, they used to be yellow and they got mm -hmm. rid of those because people were stealing stuff. And, you know, then they went to the clear ones. The clear ones are great because they got, you know, Disney Parks logo on it. And, and that's great. If you really want a Disney poncho, go get one. But if you want to save a little bit of money, go get, you know, a couple bucks per poncho. And, and they fold up in a little three by four square. You could literally almost put it in your back pocket. Um, but if you have some older ponchos, you know, stow your rain gear hat glove you know hat and galoshes whatever you want to bring put it in a bag and throw in a locker that's the best thing so you're always prepared if the bottom drops out like it did here just a few hours ago here in tampa and then now it's hitting tony over in orlando you know you want to be prepared to walk through it because the one thing no matter how great um they are at, at keeping the water levels controlled we have been to disney on a few occasions where the water was very very deep uh coming off the monorail and going into the park that little drop off right where you know you would step on to the to the boats going over to the resorts 
the system there can get overwhelmed at times and then water gets kind of deep right there. So, you know, you're going to ruin some sneakers or flip flops. So have some rain gear, store it in a locker, my friends. I was on main street once. It was raining so hard that between the curbs on main street was almost filled with water. That's how much water, that's how fast and hard it was raining. I was like, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. So talk about, I, I, I have a small, uh, pocket umbrella. I think totes sells it, yep. which fits great in my cargo shorts. And I throw uh, my little, you know, poncho in there and I got a poncho umbrella oh. in my little cargo shorts all the time. So that's what that is. <laughs> is that a umbrella? You're just happy to see me. <laughs> is that an umbrella in your pants or anyway, yeah. sorry. Anyway. Sorry, kids. That was horrible. Yeah. The next best thing, if you are going to stay in the parks, and I think you should stay in the parks, and maybe you don't want to get wet, is do all the indoor uh, attractions. Go to, you know, Hall of Presidents, go to Mickey's Phil Magic, go meet some characters inside, you know, go to Carousel of Progress, go on the TTC, or TTA, you know, do all those indoor things where you can get out of the rain. That's the if you're gonna stay, do those things. You don't want to be riding on Dumbo when there's lightning. You don't want to be outside on runaway train while it's right. lightning out. You know, do right. the indoor things. Well, and they they won't run those rides if lightning is present. But True. if lightning's not present, they'll probably run them. And I know this for a fact because I've ridden actually one of the first episodes uh, with Rick that I was on was riding Everest <laughs> in the rain. And that, that ride goes pretty quick. So you're 30, 50 miles an hour in the rain and it doesn't have a windshield. So that stuff was hitting us in the face pretty hard. Um, but the thing is, is you, you could walk off and walk right back on. I mean, you know, if you don't mind getting a little wet, uh, riding out outdoor rides is okay, but you're going to get soaked. Indoor rides is definitely the way to go. And the the other thing is the great thing about Walt Disney World as opposed to Disneyland is a majority of the attractions here have indoor queues mm-hmm. or they're covered because yeah. of the sun. Right. You know, there's very few outdoor queues yep. um, to think about it. So that's pretty good. Another great idea if you're going to uh, if you're going to stay in the parks and you don't feel like trying to sneak into all the attractions because everybody's going there is to, is to hop into one of the quick service restaurants and you can chill out. You grab something to eat, relax, uh, you can just hang out. There's a lot of places, a lot of little nooks and crannies, especially in Adventureland and Frontierland, where you can have a seat. You can stay dry. You could just chill out until the rain passes because uh, it usually does pass. There's there's a lot of places you can hang out in over to Marland, you can go over there and, and chill out. There's a lot of great places to hang out there. So, you know, grab yourself something to eat. If you're in the, the Pinocchio Village House, if you're, we're talking a lot of the Magic Kingdom, um, you can sit and watch people ride. It's a small world. There's tons of places at Epcot. And, you know, there's a lot of really great places talking about like the Flame Tree Barbecue. They have a lot of covered pavilions throughout the parks where you can sit, you can stay covered uh, and you can watch and listen to the rainfall. It's very soothing, very relaxing. And if you've got a if you've got a kind of a grumpy little one, that's a great place to go because they'll conquer right out because the rain's very calming. And, you know, if you're if you've got a great view of the Yeti ride, I mean, it's it's just a, it's a great place to go chill out. So go to a quick service restaurant. Grab yourself something to eat, relax, stay dry, and wait for the rain to pass. If you're near a cast member, you'll hear on their little radios this squawking tone, you know, that goes out. It'll be like, bop, 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 bop. and if you hear that sound, run for cover because that is uh, the operation center warning the cast members that a storm is coming, that it's A, going to rain, and B, probably lightning is on the way. So if you're hanging around a cast member or if it's looking cloudy in the skies, uh, you know, go hang out near some cast members and just, you know, wait and you'll hear this boop, 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 boom, time to go. I was uh, just probably last year, I was in uh, the Magic Kingdom and I was right by, I was in Tomorrowland mm. and I heard this cast member's radio I quickly turned my head. I was like, oh, it's going to rain. And I went over to uh, Space Mountain in the gift shop slash arcade and just grabbed a window seat and I watched it rain for about an hour. Uh, and then I, you know, was sitting on my phone, just da, 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 da. And that was it, waited for it to, you know, calm down. I went outside and so listen uh, for uh, cast members' radios. I think most, of, I think that sound 
even if they have their headpiece, their earpiece in, uh, it still comes out the radio because they want them to hear it. Right. So cool. Yeah. Well, another great thing that you can do is go shopping. Now, a lot of people are going to run into the stores just because they want to stay dry, but that's a great opportunity to actually do some shopping. And a lot of the stores, especially like in Magic Kingdom and Main Street USA, they're they're connected. And it's the same way at Hollywood Studios. You have several stores that are connected to each other, so you could spend a lot of time just wandering and seeing some really cool things. And um you know, that's a great time to get some shopping done. The stores are nice and big. They can house a lot of people. Uh, another idea, uh, while you're shopping, if you're at, um, if you're at Epcot, a really great idea <laughs> while you're shopping is to actually walk around the pavilions. I think we spend a lot of time, you know, trying to get on, you know, Soren and Test Track and all those things. And then, you know, we focus a lot about, you know, eating and dining at Epcot. But, you know, those pavilions are really amazing, you know, and, and I love every time I go to the, the Japan pavilion, I, I learn something new. I see something new. It's really amazing to, to go and hang out there. Uh, and you, you might discover some things that you didn't know were there. And you might have a better experience, but definitely shopping and enjoying the the stores and the places that you're at in the parks is a lot of fun. Of course, if you wanted to hop over to a downtown Disney, I'm sure they don't have a problem with you uh, doing some shopping over there. Hey, the Japan Pavilion, uh, I like to go in there and try a new snack. <laughs> they have some interesting snacks over there. Yes, they do. Have you done a sake tasting over there yet? No, I haven't. Oh, we've got to do that. I didn't know it was there for the longest time. Yeah. Actually, in the store, um, mm-hmm. which is underneath uh, Teponito, in the very back, yep. you can go, and they've got this little bar area set up. You can actually go, and you can do a sake tasting. Mm-hmm. And it's really amazing. I, I, I didn't know it was there, um, but I certainly, now that I know, I, I definitely want to go back. It's really a cool experience. Another thing you could do is just ride the monorail. <laughs> I There are some times, well, in the summer, that's all I'll do. I'll just, you know, kind of go and just hang out and ride the monorail. Maybe I'll go to the, some of the resorts on the monorail. Maybe I won't. Right. But you just hang out on the monorail till, uh, you know, the rain stops. Nobody's forcing you to get off. They don't make you get off. You can right. you can stay on there for hours. And the same thing coupled with that too is if you if you were at Magic Kingdom, you just ride the train. Yeah. You know, ride the train around. They're not going to make you get off, and you might get a little wet, but yeah. you know, just ride around the the park and enjoy that. So that's a good idea. I wish the other parks had some kind of, you know, train or monorail or some kind of transportation around them. You know, like the studios and uh, well, Animal Kingdom does have a train in the back. Right, it doesn't go around the park per se. No, yeah. no, but it's it's cool. It's a nice uh, it's a nice experience. Yeah, um, but yeah, that'd be kind of neat. So another idea, if uh, even if you're not a guest, is to just kind of hang out at the resorts. You know, Tony was talking about jumping on the monorail at the Magic Kingdom Resort. You could ride and go to three different resorts until the until the rain goes away, and you can explore those places that you might not have ever been. Um, you can certainly. Uh, go to the boardwalk and you can explore the the boardwalk and then you can kind of rush over to the the beach and the yacht club you can you can check those places out and you know we don't really talk about this a lot because they're not technically disney resorts but you can check out the swan and the dolphin there's less to do over at the swan the dolphin is the larger of the two correct I think so, yes. Yeah, so there's less to do with the Swan, mm-hmm. but the Dolphin has got a lot of really cool restaurants, got a lot of really neat places, especially during the holidays. There's some really cool things that happen over there that, that you wouldn't know about because we really don't talk about it that much because they're not technically Disney resorts. Um, but yeah, you, you can you can do that. Uh, you know, I love to go to the Animal Kingdom Lodge. I could I could stay there for months, you know, and, and just kind of hang out and you know go to the go to the lounge area, have dinner, just walk around and and sit on the back porch when they've got the like a like a closed in lanai kind of thing. You can sit in a rocking chair and just look out over the the plane and see a bunch of animals standing around getting wet. I mean that's that's what I like to do, but I'm a nerd. But yeah. um, definitely hang out at the resorts and enjoy your time there, and, and go exploring. There's a lot of a lot of really cool details and things that you can do at each of the Disney resorts. You can go exploring and spend tons of time there and, and play games with your kids. And I think that's almost as much fun as going to a park. 
And you'll find that it, it'll be some of the best memories of your vacation because you're not trying to get in line for fast pass. You're not trying to do all these things. Wow. Listen to that. Who's ever gotten in line at fast pass now that magic bands are out? <laughs> you're not rushing to try to get to the next, you know, fast pass appointment. You're not trying to struggle through crowds. You're, you're in a resort, you're walking around and you're at your own pace and, and you're making those special memories. So definitely want to hang out at the resorts. Yeah. And a lot of times they bring those uh, pool activities inside to the lobby, too. So yeah. if you do have kids, you know, there's probably things for them. Disney's already thought of that, and they'll bring those activities inside for you to do. If you are heading downtown uh, or if I remember one time uh, we knew it was going to rain. And what we did was we went to downtown Disney, went to Disney Quest and spent the day uh, at Disney Quest. Yeah. You know, until the rain stopped. You know, it's, what is it, five floors of interactive yeah, games? <laughs> yeah, five floors of interactive yeah, games yeah. and fun. And they have some uh, places you can grab something Food, to eat, yeah. something to drink there as well. Yep, yep. And do they serve alcohol there? I don't think so. Oh, I, dude. I, you know what? They might. They might serve yeah. just beer and wine. Yeah, after after being in there for a few hours, you might need to. Yeah. But there's a you lot know, of interesting things to do there. I mean, you can make your own roller coaster, there mm-hmm. are bumper cars, you can paddle mm-hmm. your own little jungle cruise. Mm-hmm. There's lots of fun things to do. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things at Disney Quest. Um, you, you mentioned Cirque du Soleil. You can go see a show at Cirque du Soleil yep. if, if yep. you have the time and the money. Yep. Um, and one of the things that Tony and I and, and Park Harper Sid love to do is they have uh, an AMC theater there. But not only is it just a regular theater, on the other side, they have a fork and screen. So, you know, if there's a movie plan that you'd like to see and you haven't had lunch or dinner, you can actually go there, have a nice meal, watch a movie while you enjoy your 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 meal. And that's, I love doing that. We drive all the way over from Tampa just to do that. Yeah, yeah that is very true. That is, uh, is one of my favorite things to do if I'm going to downtown Disney. Plus, there's, there's tons of places over there, like um, all of the restaurants have... Right loungy areas you know house of blues has a covered areas that you can you can just go sit and hang out and you know have a couple appetizers and have a have a water or a coke or whatever you choose to drink i mean there's a lot of really cool places the thing is um you just have to be willing to 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 go in there and look around and ask questions the splitsville splitsville boom boom room oh yeah yeah Yeah, i was i was going to mention that eventually the boom boom room and then you've got uh, you know, Bongo's Gloria Stefan's restaurant, mm. Bongo. They got, they got a bar. They do have a bar. They have a little seating area. They have a indoor and outdoor. Yeah. Um, you know, they got the Wolfgang Puck restaurant. Um, it's got outdoor seating as well. I mean, there's a lot of really cool places and that's just on the West side. Yeah. If you go over to the marketplace side, that's a lot of your shopping. You're going to do a lot more shopping over there, but they still have some really cool places. They've built that up. They've got the, you know, the margarita bars. Now it's got an outside deck. They've got some really cool places to sit and hang out. That is covered. That will protect you. And yeah. the other thing that you can do there is, you can hop on a uh, one of the Sasagula boats and you could ride around the downtown Disney Lake and you can even ride over to the two Port Orleans resorts and you can ride over to uh, Saratoga Springs. And Old Key West. And Old Key West. That's one of my favorite resorts. If you've ever been to Key West, man, Old Key West has become one of my favorite resorts. Yeah, yeah I spent a lot of money at the Gurgling Suitcase. Whew. <laughs> Way too much. Do you know why they call it the gurgling suitcase? I do not. Enlighten me. All right. So back in the day when there was prohibition, people used to put their liquor in their suitcases and they used to, you know, kind of make a sloshing gurgling sound. Oh, wow. So uh, that's how the police used to identify the smugglers from the people that were actually (laughs) using a suitcase for the right purpose. (laughs) That's amazing. So now you know. Now you know. And knowing is half the battle. That's right. All right, so that's it. Uh, We'd like to know what you think about the rain or anything else we talked about in this week's news. You can contact us at DisneyParksPodcast at gmail.com or you can go to the Disney Parks page on the internet at DisneyParksPodcast.com where you can find many, many ways to contact us via Facebook or Twitter or our little interactive uh, show recorder. Whatever it is, we'd love to hear from you. Tell us whatever you want. We are here to listen. All right. So that's it for this week's show. We'll see you in the parks. 
The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Like a boat out of the blue Fate steps in and sees